So I've owned a Nuki 2.0 and a Nuki 3.0 smart lock. Today, we're taking it to the next level. We're looking at the Nuki 3.0 Pro. I'm also gonna talk about the fingerprint sensor. That's my new favorite way to get access to my home. Thanks Nuki for sending these products over so I can make this video. Nuki smart locks try to integrate with your existing home without actually affecting the call functionality. This means that you can still use your existing key from the outside to open your door. And from the outside, it doesn't even look like you have a smart lock. It integrates well with HomeKit and Home Assistant from a smart home point of View. But let's talk specifically about the 3.0 Pro. They pretty much look the same, but there's one key component, the bridge. In a previous situation, you needed a bridge that was connected into your wall socket all time. This allowed you to connect to the device via Wi-Fi, which was key for to enable integrations with smart home devices. If not, you had to rely on Bluetooth which sometimes was a little bit glitchy. So now you don't, you no longer need this bridge in your home. It's all integrated in one device. Also, we have a rechargeable battery pack. You can get the battery pack in the non-pro version, but you have to buy it additionally. This comes with it. So I've been using a battery pack on my 3.0 for quite a while. And I'm telling you, these are our lifesavers. You are going to need your charger batteries a lot. And there's gonna be some ways and tips I could give you in this video to save some battery, depending on some of the settings that you actually put in. So once you've measured the distance of the key, you're going to need your key permanently inserted, and you need to decide to either put the faceplate A or faceplate B. So the installation is exactly the same as all of the other Nookies. You just clip it in. In my case, I just have to tighten the three screws around, attach it to the base and here for the clicks and tap all around to ensure that it clicks firmly. Remember to pull all the tabs out for the battery and tear here. This part of the installation is going to be different depending on what light lock you have at home. Just follow the instructions on screen. It should go quite smoothly. Now, I had a couple of issues during the installation. First of all, I wasn't able to connect to Wi-Fi for some reason. I wasn't even to able to update the firmware while I was doing the installation. Luckily, I was able to skip all of these parts and I got to the actual using the unit uh, screen. So, and then I was able to actually do everything. So for some reason, they didn't work out of the box. If you're coming from an old lock, you need to do a couple of things. You need to remove the old device also. You need to ensure that the old device is removed from your home kit or home assistant too. If you're using these little key fobs, like black things that allow you to open or unlock the door, you're going to need to pad them also again to your device by holding the button down and then follow the menu screens. There are a couple of improvements that I noticed. First of all, premium feel to it when you actually touch the device compared to the previous device. But most importantly, the actual locking mechanism makes significantly less noise. In fact, if you're from the outside and you hear the door unlocking, it used to be a little, little bit more prominent. So you knew that the door was going to unlock. You can also dim down the LED light of the circle also if that bothers you. So great improvements from the hardware point of view, a few glitches from the software point of view. At that point, I had pretty much similar functionality to 3.0 with the Pro. The keypad is gonna add a lot more functionality. When I opened the box for the keypad, I thought the keypad was going to be a little bit bigger, but I was quite happy with this format. It fits really well on the frame of the door and it actually feels quite good to the touch. So there are two codes, one code that you set up in the app and then there's another code again to open the door from the keypad and you can also add your fingerprints. Now I don't know how many fingerprints you can actually add, I've added a couple, but the fingerprint response is actually pretty good. I'm able to pretty much touch with my thumb on the print and hold my lever down to engage the mechanism to open the door, which is the particular mechanism of my door. And I'm able to do that and it's pretty much nearly instantaneous. To close the door, you can just uh, tap on the back button. You can set that up in the app and you can automatically close the door. Love that. From a hardware point of view, I think this is a winner. From a software point of view, I have one big problem with the keypad. Most likely, you're going to decide to add different fingerprints, right? And most likely you might decide to do that with someone that might not be part of your family, okay? When you go through the process of adding another fingerprint, 
in the menus, you actually see in clear the actual code to get inside the house. That is a bit of a security issue in my opinion. I would love to see that code hashed out with a little button and maybe if you want to unhash it, you need to punch in another code again and then it actually, you actually can see it. Just having that number there for me it made me feel nervous clearly when I was recording the screen for this video. But just in general, it just doesn't feel the right thing to do. It feels that like that needs to be corrected and I hope it will be. I think Nookie, we need to look into that. From a home assistant point of view, clearly my integration broke, which is unfortunate, but that's the way it is. I expected that to not work. And the second problem was that I noticed that the bridge, so I, the bridge that I was using before was basically giving me a token and that token was like what I punched into Home Assistant to get the Nuki connected up. But then I thought, well, I don't have a bridge. Where do I find this setting? So I looked around, and uh, to be honest, I haven't looked in detail, so I might be wrong, but I looked quickly on the settings and I couldn't find any quick option to do exactly what I was doing before. What we do have is a new option to use the MQTT broker, and you can set it up with Home Assistant and different things, which is great but I wanted to use exactly what we had before, but it doesn't seem the case that that is compatible, it does exist. So if you're interested in finding out more about this smart lock and home assistant and how they can live together, then remember to give this a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot. So let's talk about the battery saving tips. Every time you move this motor and the more times the motor moves, more energy is going to expand. So oh, clearly that's going to be your biggest problem. How many times you literally open and close and lock and unlock. But if you do that, it could cause you a little bit of a battery drain for absolutely no reason. You can in fact do something different like schedule it maybe once in the evening at 10 o'clock or when your bedtime is, or you could automate that with some sort of automation or you could just do it manually. Trust me, you don't want to have this to die on you because if the lock dies on you, the only option you have to open it up because you're from the outside is to have the actual key, right? You need to have a physical, the physical key and not all cylinders are compatible with this. So you need to check first before you install that your key, you basically, if you put your key in one side and the key from the other, that you're able to still turn the door and open it. So if you're interested in finding out my other videos in the Nuki series, you'll probably find them somewhere here or you'll find the best video suggested by YouTube. This is Jeff from Smart Makers. See ya.